welcome to the year ahead, where we proudly present our wares for 2018. Come in, have a browse, and pick out the updates that really juice your squirks. If you like jabbing sticks into your eyes, then the first update in January is your jam. There's two new stalker creatures at Slayer levels 71 and 99, all found within a dungeon beneath Demonheim. Get up to your eyeballs in eyeballs and earn the Blinding Hex Hunter Bow, a rare level 80 bow that has a large damage increase against magic opponents and an accuracy increase to those weak to arrows. There's also elite mobs to fight, a pet to earn, lore to find, and new high tier arrows to fletch and loot. It'll be our first update of the month on the 8th of January, and we'll be partnering up with a re-release of the anniversary cake for RuneScape's 17th birthday. Yeah, RuneScape is now old enough to get a driving license. If you're a skiller, then we'll offer the Elder Divination outfit in-game. Grab fragments from Divination and fuse them together for supercharged benefits. We're also bringing the skill outfit head add-ons in-game at the same time. For the crafters and rangers out there, we're offering the Enchanted Bracriminal Bolts update, which gives some love and enchanted gems to a bracriminally underused part of the game, with different effects for each of the 11 gems. We're planning to bring forward some changes from the Bank Rework too, in the Bank Rework Taster. In it, you'll find Diango and Costume Room access from the Bank, all 10 presets visible as standard and highlighting on any junk items that can be readily ditched. Hattie, Skull and Fenrir make a return, along with their pal Vic the Trader, who handily converts their bonanza of bonus XP into unlocks, XP and more. The Aura Bag arrives after adjustment based on your feedback, and brings Auras out of your bank and into your main interface, where they can be browsed and activated from a single location. Sliske's endgame replayability also makes a belated entrance, allowing you to hunt out all your favourite gods in that maze. But it's in February, March and April that things get interesting. The move away from expansions bears fruit, and the fruits are juicy. In no particular release order, let's start with Clue Scroll Overhaul. It includes some things you might expect, like Master Tier Clues, new puzzles and new rewards, including Second Age Sarah Doman gear, a Robin Hood outfit, and dragon masks. But there are things you might not have expected, like a Clue Scroll log to track your overall winnings. It's been tracking your winnings for two months now. Heidi Holes for remote clues, a Clue Scroll outfit that makes you a clue hunting superstar, and fixes to Clue Scrolls as a whole, like stackable caskets and the capacity to hold up to 25 clues of each tier. Then there's Solak, a top-tier boss aimed at groups of seven with a distinct duo mode for those who struggle to form a bigger group. He's had a makeover since RuneFest, again based on your feedback, and there's a fascinating story to be uncovered. If you can hatchet your way through to it, hone your skills, get to the grove, and see if you can be the first to topple the tree, you might get some tier 92 crossbows for your efforts. Pieces of Hate arrives in port, and the finale of the Pirate Quest series has got a cargo full of adventure, humour, and loved characters from the previous quests. Whilst it's effectively the last in the series, the Pirate Quests have been unpredictable in their unpredictability, so don't expect it to end swimmingly. You can, however, be sure that Rabbit Jack will make an appearance and war will come to mostly harmless. Continuing the nautical theme will be deep sea fishing. This beautiful location is aimed at mid to high level and offers diversity to the traditionally laid back fishing skill. We're aiming for every visit to be different. One moment you will be dealing with sea beasts from far flung locations, the other you'll be catching the new best in slot catch, sailfish. This is a serene location we expect fishers to fall in love with. And now for the quickfire round. Group Iron Man follows the rules of Iron Man but allows linked Iron Men to trade amongst themselves and participate in multiplayer content like group bosses and dungeoneering. Safe cracking is best described as elder trees for thieving, tasking the player with travelling to vault in the castles of Gilinor, all for XP and new rewards unlocked at the Thieving Guild. We'll be bringing you the mimic bossing game permanently, the mining and smithing beat will roll in, giving you a chance to forge the future of two skills. Spring Fair will return with less focus on rune coins to participate and it will home the Easter event. We'll be building a minigame hub to bring all minigamers into one location, cutting some of the more underused minigames in the process. You'll get to rebuild Edgeville after its Dragonkin decimation, a high-level Brimhaven agility arena and graphical rework will get players tagging pillars together, and a calendar of events will give you the lowdown of what is happening in-game at any one time. 
Then there's the biggie, the next double XP weekend. This will take place on the 23rd to the 26th of February, so start prepping now if you don't want to pay inflated prices for supplies. More importantly, we are back to supporting special effects that weekend, and we'll be raising money for them during a 24-hour Games Blast livestream. Please give generously. We're aiming to keep that quality and frequency up for the rest of the year, which brings us to... There's no doubting the headlinest of headline acts. RuneScape on mobile is due for launch later in the year, making Gillenor available to you on the move. This won't cost a dime extra, it's all part of your membership. We want you to get involved with upcoming betas, surveys and showcases so that you are the ones who tell us when it is ready for launch. For us, it's the most exciting development in RuneScape since Guthix took a staff to the chest. Mining and smithing rework is aiming for the third quarter and it's the full fat experience. All tiers are being moved down to match the combat sets of their resulting gear, and new tiers of ores are being added to the top end, bringing new weapons and armors. That could have been it, but we're chucking in new mining areas, new smithing rewards, quality of life improvements, like making mining rocks inexhaustible, and changes to every single piece of content that is affected by the rework, which is the largest part of the whole project. It's here that the section gets a bit more speculative. We're planning to work on these projects, but they're not yet in active development. This includes bank rework, we're eager to kickstart the full project as soon as possible, and that's likely to be after the mobile launch. You know what it includes already, bank placeholders and a slew of quality of life and customization features. We've also neglected clans over the years, and we want that time to end. We've collected info from current clan members and leaders, and we've got prioritized areas of attack. We're eager to make clans more versatile to manage. We want new players to be introduced to clans early so that they can be guided to the best content, and we want clans to feel a little more competition with each other. We might even bring clans more onto the surface world. It's still early days and it's similarly reliant on mobile to be launched, but we will begin to sneak out smaller clan updates and show you our design before then. Some other promised updates will be incoming. You can expect scaling off hands. We'll be looking to fix daily scape through a number of rework projects while also ensuring that new updates don't add to the problem. And we will be looking to make small improvements to shattered worlds to increase variety. Think new objectives to achieve and new rewards together. We feel we've had a bittersweet 2017. Some good projects in the form of Next Angel of Death, Combat Pets achievements and more, but a general sense that we could have done so much better. And in 2018, we're determined for it to all go differently. When we look through the year ahead, we feel like it's ambitious and, importantly, achievable, as we've either started work on all these projects or we will do so soon. And it's not just about quantity either. We're already on track for getting ahead of ourselves, finishing projects well before release dates so there's more time to get projects right. Plus, the team are enthused about showing their work in content showcases, betas, social posts, surveys and polls so we can get your feedback in early to truly make a difference to what we're producing. We're really excited about the new year, but we want to know whether you think we're in the right direction too. So please do let us know. And in the meantime, have a wonderful new year. And we'll start the updates rolling with Stalker Creatures on the 8th of January. Have a happy new year and have a wonderful 2018.